Welcome to the deep dive. You know that feeling, right? Yeah. That fundamental human drive we all have. That need for information. Exactly. That urge to resolve uncertainty. Right. The internet has, well, it's supercharged it, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. We've got this amazing access to knowledge. Which is great, but also, let's be honest, it's kind of overwhelming sometimes. Completely. Just this massive ocean of data we're always trying to navigate. And that brings us to something uh, pretty surprising, actually. Even with all the incredible AI progress, the big models, the LLMs we hear so much about, yeah. they still really struggle with, well, navigating the internet effectively, especially for finding complex sort of hidden information. That's a key point. It's this ambiguity, this vastness. Proprietary systems, some of them have cracked this. Right, systems like uh, Deep Research, they've achieved what the paper calls superhuman abilities here. Which leaves a big gap, a capability gap between those closed systems and, you know, the open source world. Which is exactly what we're diving into today, this new system called Web Sailor. Mm -hmm. And the goal here isn't small. It's specifically designed to close that superhuman gap for open source AI agents. We're talking about teaching AI to think like a real expert researcher, someone who can handle like extreme uncertainty. Finding answers that are just incredibly tough, yeah. maybe even impossible for a person to find quickly. Right, stuff that would take hours, maybe days. A pretty bold mission. <laughs> And uh, we're getting our insights today straight from the source, a new research paper. Yeah, it's called Web Sailor, Navigating Superhuman Reasoning for Web Agent. From the Tunky Lab at Alibaba Group, dated uh, July 4th, 2025. So very fresh. Hot off the presses. It really promises to shake things up for open source AI on the web. So yeah, let's dive in. Let's do it. You know, we often look at AI and think about what it can do, but this web navigation thing, it's like a surprising weak spot. It is. And when you look at why it's hard, it kind of reflects our own limits, doesn't it? How so? Well, humans, we have finite memory, right? Our attention wanders. We can't really chase down multiple research paths at the same time. Okay, yeah. I can only keep so many tabs open in my brain. Exactly. And AI models, especially open source ones, have kind of mirrored those struggles. The proprietary ones figured out ways around it. But for open source, it's been a tough nut to crack. And the performance difference is pretty stark, isn't it? It really is. The paper's quite blunt. They say existing open source agents often show near zero accuracy on the hard web benchmarks. Near zero? Wow. Yeah, like browse comp in, browse comp. Zzz. These aren't just slight misses. It's a fundamental failure on complex tasks. Okay, so the paper breaks down these tasks into levels, which I found really helpful. Helps pinpoint the problem. Yeah, it's a good way to think about it. Level one is, you know, the easy stuff. Low uncertainty. Like a quick search. Exactly. What's the capital of France? Something the model probably knows or can find in one hop. Simple. Got it. Level one, straightforward. What's level two? Level two starts with high uncertainty, so it seems tricky at first, but crucially, there's a clear path, like a structured way to get the answer. Think standard multi-hop questions. You might need several steps, but the connections are logical, defined, you follow the trail. Right, so the path exists, even if it's long. Yeah. But then, level three, that sounds like the real beast. That's where it gets really interesting and where Web Sailor focuses. Level three problems have both high uncertainty and high difficulty in reducing it. Meaning, meaning there's no predefined solution path, no clear trail. You have to explore, make connections, deal with ambiguity. Oh, okay. And that's where current models just fall down. They can't develop that kind of complex uh, reasoning on the fly. Pretty much. They aren't trained for that kind of genuine exploration under extreme uncertainty. So Web Sailor's big idea, its core breakthrough, is teaching the AI how to systematically reduce extreme uncertainty, even without a clear map. Exactly. And that starts fundamentally with the training data. You can't teach complex reasoning without complex problems. Right. But how do you even create problems that are harder than what humans can easily solve but are still solvable. That's the clever part. They needed data with this high and hard to reduce intrinsic uncertainty, so they built a special data set called Sailor Fog QA. Sailor Fog, I like that. Suggests the difficulty, the ambiguity. It fits perfectly. They generate this fog in a couple of ways. First, 
structural complexity. Okay. They simulate random walks across actual websites, like hopping from link to link, building these interconnected knowledge structures. So it's not just linear. Not at all. It creates okay. novel combinations of known entities and relationships, things that haven't been explicitly linked before. It forces the AI to reason about these new uh, compositions. Like building a really complex maze from real web pages. Okay, that's one layer. What else? Then they add information obfuscation. They deliberately make the starting clues fuzzier. How so? Give me an example. Okay, so instead of a precise date, like November 12, 2010, they might change it to in the early 2010s. Ah, uh, harder to search for. Exactly. Or instead of a specific name, say the institute founded by Jonas Salk, it might become an institution founded by someone with the initial J. Wow. Or quantities. Yeah, turning numbers into descriptions, like a market share of less than 1% becomes a qualitative phrase. It forces the AI to interpret and connect clues, not just match keywords. They're really making it work for the answer. The paper has some mind-bending examples of these level three questions. They're pretty intense. Like this one, an early Christian poetic hymn composed by a late antique writer who passed away around the mid fifth century. Okay, still with me? Yep. The year of this writer's death coincides with the last year of a scientific chronology that reconstructs environmental conditions from several centuries before the modern era. What is the name of this chronology? Whew, that's a multi-layered puzzle. Right. The answer is estimated tree ring chronology, 300 450 AD. But figuring that out, I mean, the paper says even powerful proprietary models might need up to 40 tool calls for some questions. 40 steps, yeah. And they check manually. These problems are basically intractable for human researchers under typical time constraints. Like you couldn't reasonably solve it in a couple of hours. That really drives home the superhuman aspect. So this Sailor Fog QA data, it's based on the real web, creates diverse challenges that's scalable. But okay, you have the hard questions. How do you get the answers and the reasoning steps for training? That seems like another hurdle. It definitely is, because even if you have an expert AI model, maybe an open source one like QWQ32B, that can eventually solve the problem. Its raw thinking process, its native reasoning output, isn't great for teaching. Why not? It's often highly stylized and verbose. Too much rambling, too much noise. Like listening to someone think out loud, warts and all. Exactly. If you try to fine tune another AI on that directly, you get stylistic contamination, the new AI picks up the bad rambling habits, and content text overload. It just gets lost in all the unnecessary detail on long tasks. Okay, so the expert solves it, but its explanation is too messy to learn from directly. How did Web Sailor fix that? They did something really smart. They used the expert models to generate the successful paths that action observation traces, basically the what and how of solving it. Okay, the raw steps. Right, but then they reconstruct the reasoning. They take those raw steps and feed them to another powerful instruction following model. A different AI. Yeah. And they prompt that model to generate concise, action-oriented thoughts for each step. Like just the key insight needed for the next action, a shortcut, short chain of thought style. Ah, so it cleans it up, distills the rambling into clear, useful instructions. Precisely. It creates a clean, effective supervision signal, mm. much better for training the actual web sailor agent. That's very clever. It's like getting an expert solution than having a great teacher explain it clearly. And this clean reasoning then drives the agent's actions using that React framework. Exactly. React is all about iterating through thought action observation. Think about what to do, do it, see what happened, then think again. So what actions can it actually take? What are its tools for exploring the web? It mainly uses two core tools within that React loop. First, there's a search tool. Okay, like a Google search. Yep, it accesses Google. But it's pretty capable, allows multiple queries, gets the top 10 results back with the title, snippet, and the URL helps it cast a wide net efficiently. And then, if it finds a promising URL. That's where the visit tool comes in. And this is crucial. It uses a service called Jana to grab the full content of the web page, not just a summary. Gets the whole page. Right. Then it uses another powerful model, Quen 2.572B, as a smart summarizer. It digests that full page content based on the specific goal the agent currently has. So it's not just blindly scraping, it's extracting relevant info purposefully. Exactly. Targeted information extraction and summarization. Okay, let's get into the training itself. This paper talks about a two-stage process, optimizing things. Yeah. What's the first stage, this RFT cold start? RFT stands for Rejection Sampling Fine-Tuning. Think of it as basic training. 
the cold start. Why cold start? Because reinforcement learning for these super complex long tasks has a big problem. The rewards are extremely sparse at the beginning. The AI would just be guessing randomly, getting things wrong constantly, and getting almost no useful feedback signal to learn from. So it just flounder. Right. So this RFT phase is modest, but indispensable. It gives the model the absolute fundamentals, how to use the tools, how to follow the basic structure of a long reasoning process, crawl before you run. And they filter the training data here too, right? Oh yeah, very rigorously. They only use trajectories, paths that actually got the correct answer. Makes sense, learn from success. And they toss out any paths that are too long, over 32K tokens, or too short, fewer than five tool calls, to make sure it's learning from complex, yet manageable, successful examples. And the focus is on the AI's own thinking. Yes. They mask out the environmental observations during this phase's loss calculation. The goal is to sharpen its decision-making, its thoughts and actions. Got it. Laying the foundation. Then comes stage two, DUPO, duplicating sampling policy optimization. Sounds fancy. What problem is that solving? Speed. The big bottleneck in training these agents is that reinforcement learning, RL, is just extremely slow. All those back and forth interactions with the web environment take ages. Right, waiting for searches, loading pages. Exactly. So DUPO uses two tricks to speed things up. First, before training even starts, it filters out the really easy cases. If the agent already gets it right every time in test runs, why waste time training on it? Focus on where it needs to improve. Precisely. Then, the core innovation is during training. Instead of just padding batches of data to make them the same size, DUPO duplicates samples from the same batch that have a non-zero standard deviation. A uh, non-zero standard deviation, meaning? Meaning cases where the agent's performance is inconsistent, sometimes it gets it right, sometimes wrong, or it takes different paths. It's still learning on those examples. Ah. So it doubles down on the tricky examples where the learning is actually happening. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It focuses compute power where it's most needed, leading to roughly two to three times speed up compared to standard methods. That's a significant speed up. Very efficient. And they use a special reward system, too, to avoid reward hacking. What's that? Reward hacking is basically the AI finding a clever way to get a high reward score without actually solving the problem properly, like finding a loophole. Gaming the system. Exactly. So to prevent that, they use a rule-based reward. It's mostly based on correctness and answer score worth 0.9, checked by an LLM judge. But there's also a small format score worth 0.1, just checking if the output looks right. So it needs the right answer and needs to follow the rules. Right. Keeps it honest. Okay. So. All this complex data generation, clever training. Mm. What's the payoff? What impact did Web Sailor actually have? Did it close that gap? The results are uh, pretty remarkable, actually. Across the board, the Web Sailor models from the small 3B up to 72B, they outperform all existing open source models and agentic methods. All of them. On the tough benchmarks, yeah. Browse Compens, Xbench Deep Search. It really sets a new state of the art for open source. And interestingly, it's not just about size, is it? No, and that's a key finding. Their Web Sailor 7B model, which is pretty modest in size. Seven billion parameters, yeah. It decisively outperforms agents built on much bigger models, like 32 billion parameter ones. Web Dancer 32B, Web Thinker RL. So the gains aren't just from throwing more compute at it. <laughs> Definitely not. It proves their novel training paradigm, that sophisticated data synthesis, the RFT, the DUPO, that's what's driving the performance leap. And the big question, did it bridge the gap to the proprietary systems? This is maybe the most significant finding. It significantly closes that gap. Specifically, Web Sailor 70-to-B achieves performance on par with Dubao, a leading proprietary system on the BrowseComp benchmark. On par. Wow. Yeah. Now, deep research is still ahead. The paper acknowledges that. But getting level with a system like Dubao is a major milestone. It brings that near superhuman capability into the open source realm. That's huge for accessibility. And does it still work on easier stuff? if it's trained on these super hard problems? Good question. Yes, it does. They tested it on simpler level one tasks, like the simple QA benchmark, and it performs strongly there too. So it has downward compatibility. It can handle the Mount Everest tasks, but also, you know, walk up a normal hill. Exactly. It doesn't lose the basics. And that RFT cold start seems critical for this. Right, the foundation. Yeah, they compared models trained with and without it. 
Direct RL training might look like it improves faster initially, but the model with the cold start gets significantly superior final performance, especially on the English Browse Comp. So that initial grounding in complex strategies is essential. It seems essential for bootstrapping those advanced capabilities. Okay, so summing up. WebSailor is a major leap. It turns open source agents into these powerful web navigators, tackling extreme uncertainty and seriously closing the gap with proprietary systems. But like all research, it's not perfect. What limitations did the authors mention? They were quite upfront, which is good to see. One thing is the 32K token limit they used for training trajectories. Oh. That might put a ceiling on performance for even more complex problems that need even longer reasoning chains. So even harder problems might need more context line. Potentially. They also noticed a tendency for overthinking. The agent sometimes uses complex multi-step tool calls, even for simple questions. Wasting effort. Maybe, but they also note it often seems to be doing it for cross-verification, checking its answer from multiple angles. Which isn't necessarily bad, just maybe not maximally efficient. Thorough, if a bit slow. Yeah. Anything else? The RL training itself, the DPO stage, is currently limited to 50 steps. This seems to be due to bottlenecks in the current way these synchronous agent frameworks work. So there's still room to make the RL training even faster and potentially deeper. Okay, clear limitations. Where do they see this going next? What's the future vision? They want to push further. Focus on defining more complex tasks with even higher uncertainty. Keep raising the bar. Yeah. And achieving more effective and efficient RL training to overcome those bottlenecks. Ultimately, the goal is pursuing general superhuman performance across more dimensions, not just this specific kind of web navigation. Expanding the scope of these advanced reasoning abilities. Right. Making truly intelligent, capable web agents a widespread reality in open source. This whole dive into web sailor, it's really fascinating. It shows AI isn't just learning facts, it's learning how to reason through deep uncertainty, how to navigate information in ways that honestly seem to push beyond normal human limits. It really does feel like a step change. So it leaves you wondering, doesn't it? What does this emerging superhuman capability mean for us? For how you listening approach finding information, learning, tackling complex problems in this world that just keeps getting more complex. Mm -hmm. Are these tools just extensions of our own minds? Or are they setting a completely new benchmark for what it means to be informed? Maybe one that we can only really aspire to collaborate with. A really interesting thought to ponder. Definitely something to think about. That's all for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us.